thanks a lot uh, for the introduction i'll just share my presentation just a second okay i'll just start off uh, on this topic beyond mba the role of a generalist in startups and mncs okay um so this is my experience uh, i have been working since uh, 2013 which is around like now 8 years of experience across various domains uh, i consider myself as a generalist uh, you can see the sort of breadth and width uh, of the career that i've had uh, this ranges from uh, multiple categories like travel aircrafts solar energy to even boring stuff like uh, insurance and the right now infamous edtech sector as well okay um can we have a poll actually uh, where uh, i wanted to understand what is your view uh, the audience's view on uh, do you want to be as a do you, are you looking at for your career as a generalist or a specialist i just want to understand what is the uh, audience uh, saying is that possible i'll create that poll um, meanwhile you can continue i'll create that poll and load that out to the people sure sure so uh, i'll go to the next slide yeah uh so i want to first start up with defining what is a generalist generally is somebody who has a very broad range of skills rather than a deep expertise in one or two specific areas uh generalists are considered to be more versatile uh can move across multiple departments uh they can basically uh they can they have different skill sets sorry uh huh they are more versatile across uh, multiple departments and they usually have a very non linear path what i mean to say by non linear path is you can see them jump across different sectors different job roles and you would have seen this especially among the alum a lot of our uh, a lot of my batchmates and uh, even the current uh, audience i'm sure are looking forward to a generalist career right uh, earlier uh, during the last century uh, it was more uh, looked at ki specialists were considered the better uh, better path career path this was because earlier uh, after before the technology revolution that is right now happening through it was more that you should have a specific experience lot of experience in a particular role for example if you are somebody like a call miner you needed to know and identify what uh, is the site where you need to dig etc in even in oil and gas field you will see a lot of people who are very deep experts in how uh, a rig is set up and how uh, a rig functions etc but now because of the technological evolution and uh, the availability of information we see that generalists have a better uh, career path ahead right now uh, and i'll explain why as well so these are the traits of a generalist which is made mainly the non linear path that they take through life second is abstract ideas and how they are able to use lateral thinking to apply these ideas across different sectors even the uh same solution they would copy paste from one specific problem to another problem in a completely different area and uh, a third trait is that they are easily able to adapt to these rapidly changing environments so these are the skill sets of a generalist basically which uh, i have sort of uh, gathered uh first thing and the most core basic uh, thing is you need to have cross functional knowledge by cross functional knowledge i mean you need to develop these uh, uh, your depth of Uh, knowledge across all these areas such as sales uh, you have marketing you have operations supply chain uh, customer experience once you have that breadth of knowledge and that is how then you are able to uh, use those patterns and recognize uh, whether you can fit these patterns and the solutions accompanying them in other areas so core functional cross functional knowledge is the first and most basic trait that is required in a generalist second is again pattern recognition a pattern recognition is uh, identifying a, a, a problem that you have solved before and applying that particular solution that you would have seen be- before in this particular new area uh, a third uh, third important skill that i would mention is people skills this is mainly managing your team uh, managing other stakeholders even if you be, uh, come up with the best solution in the world if you are not able to convince your uh, Uh, colleagues or your uh, leaders then that solution will not get implemented and hence people skills is a very important trait for a generalist the fourth one is again uh, problem solving and analytical skills the one tool that has helped me throughout my career after mba has been an excel 
uh, if like even uh, more than a python or say learning uh, something like uh, seo uh, and excel has helped me uh, because these analytical skills that is developed using excel and all can be applied through multiple other areas uh, to show for example the pnl how how does a pnl look uh, how does uh, one metric uh, for example uh, how does a, uh, improving a touch point in a customer experience journey improve the overall customer experience all these are analytical skills which can be applied across multiple uh, multiple problems and uh, next one which i regard as very important is a growth hacking mindset uh, any startup that you come across uh, always has a requirement for somebody who can do growth hacking by growth hacking it is uh, i i am here referring to uh, how can you increase the uh, say revenue or any particular met- metric with using non conventional solutions okay uh the next point resourcefulness and frugality is something very characteristic to a startup environment so where you have very limited resources and then you need to find solutions within the boundaries defined by that uh, so here frugality uh, is for example a very common uh, frugal mindset would be using very small budgets uh, to ensure that you get a better reach uh, one particular example that i think you guys would connect with is a uh, is the sleep internship that uh, we are doing at wakefit this was a growth hack that had uh, worked around 3 years back and every year it has been able to give us uh, a, a high range of awareness uh, in india and it is at a very frugal cost like the you wouldn't believe the sort of budgets that go into it but because of the uh, the nature of sleep internship it has been able to give us this campaign has been able to give us very vast reach across uh, india um another important task is uh, sorry another important skill set is project and time management every project has its uh, boundaries set across uh, where you need to be very clear about the objective what are uh, what are the milestones to reach those objectives and what are the timelines that you implement for this so time management and project uh, management is a very important skill set especially when you start to climb up the ladder where you start managing your own teams uh you have people working underneath you on specific tasks it is your task to ensure that these projects uh meet the objective as within the uh, timelines as well as the budgets set aside the next point is uh leadership and team building so uh especially when you have grow when you're growing through your career as a journalist uh there will come a time when you will have to lead very large teams so this would uh, most probably have uh very uh, like high a pnl or some other responsibilities which is very core to the startup or the company and this would uh, involve team building as well so as a generalist it is ens- you should ensure that uh, along the way you learn and uh, like sort of understand from other leaders in your company or other even other role models outside how what are the basic tenets of a leadership and how do you build your team so you how do you ensure that your team members are growing alongside you uh, how uh, how do their jobs evolve as and when the startup grows as well and the last and uh, the final point is continuous learning uh, the uh, as a generalist you need to ensure that you are continuously learning new uh, problems uh, how to tackle new solu- uh, problems new solutions uh, what are the new uh, new ai solutions that are coming across uh, how do you learn to be better across your uh leadership skills as well as other management skills as well so the last part is something that we need to be aware of but something that gets lost when you are uh, held up in your day to day activities and uh, like other uh, very like d- deadlines and all you tend to forget the last step but this is something that you have to ensure so that you are relevant uh, and you stay uh, you are able to grow in your career uh, is that poll ready ata um we're actually unable to get to the poll because of the control issues that have been given to us oh okay okay no bro no bro um we'll consider it in there no bro. okay uh the next one is uh, where do you where... list in general that would be awesome pardon can you repeat that yeah uh i'll go to the next one where do where does a generalist fit uh in today's world so these are the basic uh, sectors where generals usually find the most uh, jobs first one is the consulting firms you are you must be very familiar with bcgp wc mckinsey etc which are your usual consulting firms 
then there are very niche ones like equia and other etikern etc which are more into say uh, medical research or etikern which is more into supply chain etc so even here uh, they consider generalist uh, as a very important requirement because uh, the sort of clients that they have and the problem statements that they look at is uh, how do you solve for xyz problem within a pr- uh, particular timeline and a project budget and the roles are usually starting as a subject matter expert then you become a consultant then it, uh, you progress to a team leader and then finally a partner where partner has more pnl responsibility while a subject matter expert is uh, dealing with the day to day consulting work uh, now coming to the next uh, largest opportunity it uh, is in startups so here the role start off as either an eir which is entrepreneur in residence uh, then there is category roles where uh, either you manage a buy side or sell side you can in in a product company uh, like uh, such as wakefit it will be a certain category like for example mattresses or say bedding products furniture may beds uh, wardrobe etc so each of them will have their pnl responsibility um, it can also uh, you can grow through these roles and become a chief of staff which is the person who is right next to the ceo and who takes care of their uh, daily uh, tasks um the chief of staff looks at various problems uh, at a very high organizational view and then uh, sort of find solutions for this he is somebody who has uh, enough depth to understand problems in each department but has a very broad uh, view so that he is able to find solutions for these departments uh and next one is mncs uh, which is your uh, say google unilever even these uh, mncs have uh, uh, roles which are open to generalists which are like your project manager strategy lead where you have to look at uh, from an org- uh, high level point of view and then sort of decide what should be the next strategy for a particular function within a company or uh, you will be uh, tasked with starting off a new product launch uh, and these people uh, and you will see that most of these cxos are uh, generalists basically in mncs uh, please feel free to uh, like ping any questions if if you have if you guys have one. okay uh, the next one is what are the pros of being a generalist uh, so the first and uh, the most important one would be your flexibility and adaptability in uh, in this world where uh, you will see a lot of changes happening businesses are going up down some sectors are growing fast whereas others are stagnant uh, generalists are able to jump across multiple departments and industries for example i was able to move uh, from travel to edtech uh, during the covid period when travel went down fully because of my experience as a general, uh, generalist so your flexibility and adaptability will be a boon for you when uh, there are a lot of changes happening even within a uh, startup for example when it goes from say 0 to 1 to 1 to 10 the sort of uh, issues that come up or the major problems that a startup face will change drastically during this growth phase so uh, being a generalist helps you adapt and find uh, roles in a within an organization as well as within different industries as well if you are a generalist second is uh, when you are a generalist you will have a very holistic understanding of what are the problems across each uh, sectors you will be able to identify and uh, sort of join the dots uh, and come up with a very very uh, uh, detailed solutions and strategies to help uh, startups as well as mncs because you uh, uh, only a generalist can have the sort of understanding of how a particular metric helps another uh, say output metric so unless you know about all the input metrics it's very hard to ensure your output is uh, as as you have projected or you have budgeted so uh, being a generalist helps in this particular part and the most important point is your entrepreneurial advantage um, in uh, in india right now especially in the startup ecosystem uh, where you will see that lot of generalists are able to move across sectors uh, for example uh, somebody who has worked in say customer experience uh, will be able to move towards say category roles that is because only because they have the traits of a generalist where it's like they have this deep uh, curiosity of under, uh, and they try to find out Uh, how does the pnl work uh, how does uh, new product launches work and uh, how can you scale this particular uh, uh, business function etc so being a generalist comes with that entrepreneurial advantage 
where you act and think like a entrepreneur how to solve problems while while also thinking about the boundary conditions as well while and this is very important in a startup because you'll have a lot of uh, such um uh, sort of boundaries uh, it will be like a budget it will be timeline crunches uh, there will be resource crunches you will not be able to hire the best person but then how do you make the best of this is a, a very entrepreneurial problem basically okay next is the cons of being a generalist now uh, i have explained the pros what uh, what is uh, a, what is a con or the negative of being a generalist the first one would be that uh, when you start off your career you'll face a lot of challenges uh, against when applying for job, jobs etc so all these jds would have a uh, very specific uh, requirements and then you will see that you might not have the depth that is required a lot of uh, uh, jobs in the uh, data science or say finance would have uh, like requirements such as cfa level 3 or say um, experience coding in python beyond the normal uh, like uh, dealing with data tables so those sort of roles become uh, uh, you cannot up, sort of apply for those roles but then uh, your uh, batchmates who are more special will be easily able to st start off in these roles but you will see that uh, although initially th this is the way things do uh, things function as in when you grow up the ladder these uh, advan uh, these cons become an advantage later um, another uh, main issue is the perception if you are uh, as a generalist most people want to uh, you usually view specialist people as having um, as being a master so they have more deeper knowledge and hence they would be better experts and uh, usually they uh, there's a perception that specialists will are the ones who grow fast but uh, coming to the uh, uh, practical side of things usually you will see that within teams beyond a certain level people with more managerial skills or a generalist gets promoted over a specialist if it's more to do with the team leadership or those sort of roles and um, the that this sort of cons of being a generalist now uh, coming to this uh, particular uh, question of which path do you want to follow is, should you be a generalist or should you be a specialist that entirely depends on which sort of uh, role or sector you want to go ahead if you want to pursue something like an ic role which is like individual contributor or you want to you like working in small teams with very niche problem statements or sectors then uh, a specialist uh, path is the one which is better suited here uh, there is a lot of demand for people who have a lot of uh, expertise in say uh, finance or uh, coding so these are uh, se sectors and jobs which are very suited for specialists coming to generalist these are uh, the jobs which you will find a lot in startups and uh, in certain mnc roles but at a certain higher level so these uh, generalists are required for uh, sectors which are just uh, newly opening up such as your e-commerce fintech uh, edtech then you have a lot of new startups which is in healthcare as well so here the problem statement is from 0 to 1 and 1 to 100 how do you grow the startup so being a generalist sort of helps uh, uh, in these roles because you are uh, open to exploring these sort of um, problem statements uh, in india the traditional path till now uh, especially uh, i am assuming that most of you before mba did uh, engineering uh, and uh, like that so you will have uh, face a problem where you know what is the problem exactly what is the problem what is the way to the solution and then there will be a specific solution but uh, in the real world uh, especially in startups what happens is the problem statement itself is very very loose it can be interpreted in multiple ways there are multiple ways uh, to solve this particular issue and uh, how do you balance out your time as well as uh, the uh, other uh, cost cost uh, associated with it so for uh, for uh, if for, so somebody coming from a, such a background becoming a generalist is very hard but once you start uh, pursuing this path you'll be able to see that growth comes very naturally you will are able to fit into a lot of roles you are able to navigate uh, sector new sectors and uh, new sectors are where usually the best uh, like possible advantages lie both financially as well as career wise and that is where a t shaped professional comes into play this is somebody who has a specialization or uh, a deep knowledge in one or two uh, areas 
but also has a breadth of knowledge for example somebody who had started off in say brand management but then le- sort of learns uh, how the pnl works how does a category grow how is npl done so then they become that p prof- shape professional who has a very broad uh, range of uh, broad uh, broad knowledge of across different sectors as well as a very deep understanding of their particular domain so what we have seen now is uh, uh, this particular uh, these particular professionals who have uh, a set of uh, broad uh, broad expertise as well as this d- deep domain knowledge is the ones who are able to even uh, uh, progress faster in their careers so this is because you are uh, thanks to uh, like say google and uh, chatgpt you are able to find solutions very fast which otherwise you would need a specialist to do right now for example in my day to day life uh, i am able to use canva and come up with creative without even waiting for the design team for very small uh, jobs and all so you will see that uh, t shaped professionals are able to uh, progress in your career very fast and um, now i'll come to my experience uh, across uh, what has been my experience so i started off as a uh, consultant uh, in lnt we, we were uh, basically working with uh, us based uh, pump manufacturers uh, i was designing pumps as well as setting up supply chain uh, uh, movement for them uh, after, i did my mba after that uh, at i am indore uh, to i passed out in 2017 and uh, back then uh, i started off with sales uh, as a, a sales manager in dish tv uh, now uh, my day to day task in uh, in dish tv was setting up uh, a distribution network working with dealers and uh, this was a lot of stakeholder management uh, Uh, the next uh, uh, the next job i did was uh, customer experience at uh, a company based out of uae which was in, more into travel i was able to understand how do uh, say uh, other uh, like international audiences look at uh, c- travel as a sector what are the key points that they look for uh, wh- what how do you make the customer experience better for them and then uh, after this my role moved to a chief of staff role which was basically looking at Uh, assisting the founder in hcic global uh, there were multiple sectors like insurance aviation uh, then travel also and here the problem statements were how do you deal with uh, say coming up with an mro project which is in a- aviation uh, which is like maintenance repair uh, and operations uh, so this was a uh, pr- project proposal that we had prepared for kochi airport uh, then another problem was how to how do we uh, start up a uh, some uh, something called a po- uh, policy house which was a online insurance platform now in uae there was uh, only like very traditional uh, insurance companies were working back then so we came up with how uh, with something very similar to policy house where uh, it is an online platform self serve where you can uh, like uh, ask for quotations and have uh, and get the quotations as well and buy as well so that was one of the first uh, startups over there which were able to do complete self serve uh, the next thing that i did was in uh, an academy as a category manager for upsc which was their largest segment uh, here i was able to look at uh, how how does uh, upsc aspirants approach online uh, edtech as a sector uh, how do they interact with the software uh, how how do i ensure that they uh, uh, they don't drop off in between the uh, courses so that was a very uh, very different uh, Uh, work experience compared to the earlier roles here there was a direct pnl management where i was responsible for the pro- uh, profit and loss in that particular sector uh, which is upsc exams and uh, the last 3 uh, years i've been working as part of wakefit which is a, a startup uh, that you would have heard uh, deals with sleep furniture any household uh, uh, household furniture bedding etc and um, here the you will see that uh, this is my career compared to say my father's career who had worked just one single job uh, all his life so uh, he was more of a specialist where i have decided to become more of a generalist and uh, within for example wake fit my uh, uh, typical day would vary month on month say for example for now uh, right now i'm looking at how how do we achieve a certain guinness world record uh another problem statement is how do we showcase our new uh, mattress cover which is which has thermo thermal regulation uh how do i showcase it at a airport 
as a growth hack. Uh, I have done multiple projects in customer experience, uh, category management. Um, then uh, and in within category management, how do uh, how do how does the chemical uh, formulation of say a mattress may form form layer? How can I use a different set of chemicals to increase the uh, increase the uh, cooling effect of say a mattress so that people can sleep better? So these are the sort of uh, problem statements I look at at a day to day. Um, this this is all because I've been I've chosen the generalist path, which helped me uh, find solutions uh, to different sort of problem statements that I I come across every uh, uh, every day in my startup. And coming to the final conclusion, uh, to wrap it up, uh, today uh, uh, being a generalist, whether you are uh, in startups or MNCs. It can help your career, but again, it's up to you whether you want to be uh, working as a specialist in smaller teams, uh, looking at very small, uh, very niche uh, problem statements, uh, going very deep, uh, or do you want to be a generalist where uh, you have flexibility, adaptability, or you have a very broad perspective in terms of uh, the sort of uh, pro uh, so problems you can solve, uh, the sort of uh, work you can take up, uh, the sort of responsibilities you can take up, um okay um yeah so my last uh, advice would be to stay curious whichever role you take but uh, you you will come across a point of time where you will see that you would not be able to stay uh, as uh, either a specialist or generalist you it will be a t-shaped professional professional that you finally uh, stay up with um, thanks guys that's uh, my time um, thank you for the wonderful presentation, Mosab. Uh, now we are open to questions. Anyone with a question can, you know, maybe raise their hands and, and we'll take them. Sure. Um, okay. One more part of being a journalist is taking up such uh, new things. This is my first public speaking sort of session. Um, so uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Oh, I see it's like equal. Yeah, I have a question. Hi, Moshav. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful insights. I was just curious about the, uh, you know, insecurity and generalist employees might have while entering the corporate level. I mean, while they are at, let's say, entry level positions. I mean, I do understand that at mid and higher level positions, uh, generalists are always uh, more in demand per se. Uh, but how about being a generalist at like, uh, you know, positions, those are uh, except for mid or higher level. Okay. Um, to rephrase the question, how do you start off as a general, generalist, right? Uh, is that in the initial part of your career? Is that what you're uh, yeah, uh, asking? So like, uh, I just wanted to know about uh, when you are starting off as a generalist, like how, what is the job security like? What are the job opportunities like? And things uh, like this. Okay. Uh, so uh, in startups, it's very uh, much easier uh, to uh, start off as a generalist because there'll be a lot of uh, these uh, problem statements which uh, which requires a generalist approach, basically. Such as, uh, for example, a zero, in a zero to one or one to hundred is about first finding your first, say, ten or fifty customers. So that won't come through Google ads or your Facebook ads. That's about how do you do growth hacking. Um, so uh, this is just an example to basically. Uh, Come across the point that uh, you will find these sort of roles. It's slightly niche, yes. It's slightly harder, but that is why I I want you guys to ensure that you have your own specialization as well. You, sh you should not start off your career saying that I can do X Y Z things. Nobody would believe you. First of all, you need to ensure that you have uh, your core capabilities. Such so uh, this can be uh, that you are good at say customer dealing with customers. So uh, it's uh, another major important thing is. Are you good at sales? I, I'm not talking about just FMCG sales. It's about how do you pitch a product? Can you pitch an idea? Um, third is again your analytical skills. Are you good with say Excel or uh, other tools basically, which uh, is about mining data and finding insights. Uh, I hope I have answered your question roughly. Like uh, it is it is not impossible, but yes, there are a few uh, uh, sort, sort of hurdles when you're starting off as a journalist. But the, uh, how you overcome is you develop some sort of specialization uh, in certain areas such as marketing or sales or say product development like that. You should not just start off as a general uh, general uh, generalist basically. Got it. Thank you so much.
um i don't know if you can go next uh, okay so i wanted to understand your perspective from a financial uh, view point so i have interned at a mutual fund house and what i saw there was that everyone who is working as an analyst as an associate or probably as levels who are managing fund houses fund uh, funds in those fund houses what they require are specialist skills but then when you have to become like a cio like a chief investment officer or a chief executive officer then you require a lot of skills you have to look at the environment you have to take decisions based on what's going on so that requires you to change from being a specialist to a generalist so how difficult do you think that process from switching to a specialist to a generalist in a financial perspective is okay uh, to answer this particular question um i have very less experience uh, in this particular startup or uh, the environment you are mentioning but i'll but try to start up uh, mentioned i completely understand i wanted to understand it from a financial perspective because there uh, you have to look at the economy how let's say an xyz thing in the in in us would affect uh, the markets in india something like on that basis i understand so uh, there are generally who are still doing lot of these like consultants for example who have these domain expertise and then are still able to use their people management skills to grow so there comes a point uh, in time where for example a cio uh, his main job would be to ensure that his team achieves the required task so uh, when you as you grow up the uh, ladder you will see that lot you spend a lot more time dealing with uh, management issues or uh, stakeholder uh, issues ra- rather than solving this particular uh, core b- business problems because you that's why you have your team for they are supposed to be the best at solving these problems your uh, your task is to ensure that their way is very clear that uh, all the stakeholders are aligned uh, so that they are able to deliver their requirements so as and when you become say six cxo it's more about how can you manage other stakeholders in your company uh, who uh, who would be having different set of priorities so uh, that is where a generalist comes in somebody who is very specialized might be good at dealing with say uh, how does uh, a market uh, changing event in us affect my uh, indexes here in india but he will not be able to deal with a uh, leadership issue say where your where another department head is not giving you the required necessary uh, support or like that so those are more the problems you face when you become a more of a uh, people person so that that is why gen- where you need your to develop your general skills as well along the way so do you believe that a person let's say who's like really good at his job who knows excel on another level who can basically make really good investment decisions but is not able to understand the market that well would halt his growth from becoming like a cio which was required like a generalist role so uh, so uh, there are two paths again even for the specialists there are a lot of ics individual contributors who are able to financially uh, earn very much because of their deep domain expertise so there are people who still prefer this uh, ic path where they don't want to take up uh, people responsibilities or management and they tend to stick to their particular uh, area of expertise uh there are uh, but there are other people who want to shift more to a management role so mo- uh, what i've seen is mostly after mbas people tend to gravitate towards this management roles because that is where they sort of are more comfortable with uh we have a question in the chat i'll just read it out for everyone's benefit can one transition from being a generalist to a specialist or vice versa um yes uh, so it is possible even when you are a generalist to for example uh develop deep domain uh, expertise so when i was working for example in insurance so even though i was a generalist i had to go deep and understand how does premium pricing work like uh, how does a policy get priced at this particular price point uh, how, what are the uh, what are the uh, like terms and conditions uh, so it is not uh, it doesn't mean like even if you are a generalist you should not uh, you cannot become a specialist it is just that you have to invest certain time and uh, like you need to be open to that you need to set aside uh, certain uh, like deep focus time so that you are not distracted by the other problems but uh, it, it is possible yes and especially if you are working in these sort of sectors like insurance or fintech you need to be aware of uh, how does it work uh, one example i can give you at wakefit is uh, we were implementing this uh, problem of search so when we started off we had like sir some eight ten pro- products that was it four mattresses and then two beds but as in when we grew as a company we had a larger catalog which was around like 200 products 300 and every month on month it was growing 
so we wanted to set uh, set up a search bar now if i was just a generalist i i i would have outsourced it to somebody as a product manager but the project i was handed was implement this particular solution so i had to go and find how apis work uh, what are uh, how do you test an api whether it's working or not uh, how do you ensure uh, like something that has that is working in your say uh, development environment when it moves into production environment which is your front end uh, how do you ensure that you do the testing for that so it doesn't mean that uh, once you're a generalist you will always be a generalist there'll be occasions when you will have to go deep dive and find uh, what, what are the uh, basic uh, uh, deep knowledge basically to ensure that you have the expert expertise to bring about that solution like uh, just because you are a manager doesn't mean you don't deep deep dive like that uh, i hope i have answered you sir um i actually have a question of my own uh sure sure so i sort of wanted to know what what sort of experiences that you had on campus because most of us are on campus right now on this call um what are some of those experiences that made you um take this path and not the other one um so i uh, i also come from a very uh, engineering sort of background where i was also more like a specialist uh, but once i was on campus i was uh, like i sort of my mind was open to the sort of possibilities you have so i was the first one in my family to do an mba so uh, i this was the first time when i started seeing something like how finance uh, how how do you deal with finance subjects uh, we even uh, actually uh, won that uh, uh, competition there was one uh, competition which happens where you have to pitch in like 3 minutes right uh, what was it called I forgot uh, i something was there right Uh, I don't remember the name exactly. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, there was this uh, pitch pitching contest where we had to pitch to uh, like uh, venture fund. Uh, there was some three VCs or some somebody like that, and we sort of won won it. And so that's how my so, uh, sort of career journey started. Out where I wanted to look at more uh, broad view uh, while having my set of skills as well. Like I didn't want to be just another. a uh, person who had uh, experience with xyz i wanted to understand how things work i was curious about uh, like how how do you ensure the pnl stays healthy while also ensuring that you have growth so uh, my experiences in the campus was mainly around these sort of startups and all that's when i was introduced to the startup world and um, i i think i was always very curious as well how things worked over there uh, i remember working with uh, your uh, canteen guys and all how to see how to look at their pnl a uh, uh, couple of projects we did over there uh, i i mean they uh, introduced me to this uh, huge possibility of a generalist basically uh, thank you that answers my question um, any anyone else who has a question now is your time raise your hands or just speak out loud seeing that, that there are no questions i let's let's wrap this up um thank you everyone for being part of the doc on behalf of the alumni committee and the alumni office of iim indore i would like you I'd like to thank you mosab for taking out time on a saturday for us and and talking to us we are really grateful for your insights and will certainly gain from them um i would also like to thank the chair alumni affairs professor prabhin panigrahi for his guidance and support and also the alumni office whose efforts actually made this talk a possibility um finally a big thank you to the audience for their enthusiasm and engagement um we look forward to seeing you at our next session as well um thank you thank you again thanks thanks a lot